Even the social media, the media in Jamaica were waiting for reports that their Nana has left Jamaica to obtain citizenship in Ghana. In Ghana. Yes. So where is Nana now? She has returned back. Woefully so, because the land which we purchased in Mamfi was fraud, we, our money, monies were stolen, and we went to the chief in the area, we went to the police station, we got no help, she was there. Her feet touched soil in Mamfi to build her house to settle in Ghana, and it was a fraud, and she has woefully returned home to Jamaica. This is a sad news. This is something that we don't want it to happen. Welcome to Kwame TV again. Today I'm here with um, a beautiful couple. When I say beautiful couple is Mr. and Mrs. Joseph, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, although I've called their name, but I will let them introduce themselves. First, this is a diaspora talk. Kwame TV had a program that talked to diasporas over in abroad and also here in Ghana and what we exactly do is we promote African businesses home and abroad and also talk to intellectuals, entrepreneurs, entertainment news and also promote the culture. As we are here today we are going to talk to this beautiful couple here my left and right which they move from America to Ghana. The intention was to come and stay because they think Ghana or Africa is their home. So, in first, ladies first, I will give you the platform for you to introduce yourself. Thank you. And today. Hi everyone, I am Xavier Joseph. I was born in Jamaica, but uh, we relocated from Florida to come to Ghana. It has been our long life dream, especially for myself. I know uh, being born in Jamaica, the output is that we'll find our way back home to the motherland. For about 20 years, I spoke to my friend. We, we worked together in the US Navy, and we came up with ways we could strategize. He could help us to come back to Ghana. In 2019, when the call was made for the year of return, he called me and he mentioned that it's time to go. There is a way to get back to Ghana. I was told that in coming to Ghana, I would receive citizenship. I would be, we would, our family would be supported to obtain land and possibly partnership in business so that we can not only help develop Ghana and empower our people in Africa, but also we'll be able to properly sit, settle and have enough subsistence so that we could survive having, after having given everything that we have in our former place of residence. Keep watching Kwame TV, like, subscribe, and share. And as the lady introduced herself first, so if you are not a member of Kwame TV, kindly subscribe, support Kwame TV to bring the message out for people in diaspora and also people here. We are trying to change the narrative of how people think about Africans in Africa and Africans also in diaspora, basically the African descendants in other parts of the world. Most of the time, people think there's nothing in Africa to take. But I'm telling you, there's a lot. Africa is the next continent to be developed. It's a virgin continent, I will say that. Africa is calling everyone. At the same time, you need to make a research, a proper one, before you come. If you want to make any research, or if you want to come through proper organization, connect to Kwame Na TV, and we will connect to 126 plus. And there are some people on the grounds who has been in Africa for about 20, 30 years, which they can support you. As I said, the diasporas. Don't jump straight away to the locals. The story we are going to tell you now will shock you, but 
it's something that if you prepare, you are not going to go through that. So let's go to Mr. Kojo. Uh, Joe, is it? Is it? Joe Joseph. Yes. Yeah. The Joe is his local name. Because he was born on Monday. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And Joseph is there. So you introduce yourself and why do you decide to come to Ghana? Okay. First of all, my name is Ulrich Joseph. Originally, I was born in the Bahamas, moved to Florida. And from Florida, we moved to Ghana because of our heritage and a longing for the place where we came from and where we belong. Before coming to Ghana, we did our research and we found out that, that, that this is where we had originated from uh, through slavery and we wanted to come back home and to re-establish um, ourselves as a part of, of the African continent. And what we have learned from the West, we wanted to bring here and we wanted to impact Ghana and impact Africa right on the whole. Um, but before coming, we did our research in terms of what we're going to do and how we're going to transition. And we did all the research. Uh, but research can be one thing, but when you physically come here and put what you learned into like actions, there I mean, is a disconnect. There was a clarion call for us to come home and we did our research and Which we came out. the government on. did on 2019? Yes. That was the year of return, like how yeah. Sylvia said? Yes. Okay. Um, so what is the whole, when you came on that 2019, I mean, when you came, that 2020, isn't it? We or, first came in 2019. You came on 2019 to yes. see. Yes. So when you came and you decide to come and settle, so when you come at the second time, was all those promises, or let me say, was things that, or the research that you make, was it the same you saw, or there was changes? It was not the same, there were changes. In fact, we, what we were fed were promises. Promises that we believed in because it was coming from high echelon yeah. down to the people. We were told there were people here for many years just waiting for certain things uh, to come in action that they were in terms, of in terms of citizenship okay. and land and being able to settle um, without being uh, victimized and be defraud defrauded. And so we held on to these promises because we've already invested so much time and energy and we really want to be here in Ghana. But things were different. Your experience? Uh, our experience is, um, even though we were invited to come home, upon arriving to come here, we found out that there was no system in place to accept us, to welcome us and to give us a good understanding of the culture, the people. It's one thing when you travel and you're passing through, but when you settle, uh, the dynamics of the whole uh, reception has changed. We made certain contacts and those things that they verify when we came here, all the agreements were not upheld properly. They weren't uh, as they were proclaimed to be. Was it the people that you contact or your, your contact people here in Ghana? Was, where did you find those people? Where did you see them? I mean, was those people someone introduced them to you or were those people diasporas or locals? It was a bit of both. Okay, uh, especially from the governmental point of view and from our contact of the person who my wife worked with pr previously on the Navy. He introduced okay. us to his family mm -hmm. and they introduced us to Ghana. In fact, they provided uh, transportation for us, a means for us to stay and to be integrated into the, the system. But after a while, these people sort of changed instead of gravitating towards helping us. It changed more by they were trying to take, they were taking advantage of us. All that we had to go through, um, everywhere we go, we have to dash this particular person, we have to do this and do that. So the... They were 
they were telling you, oh, we need to pay money to this man, yes. Yes. money to this man, or something like yes. that. We paid five okay. times just for one service. Okay, let me let me get it clear here. Um, when you come, you purchase a land, or what did you purchase, or properties? Yes, you purchase yeah. land. You purchase land. Yes. And what was your intention of coming to Ghana and purchase land? Were you coming to open an um, charity, or were you? Yes. So what that explain this that what yes. your intention that you came to Ghana because some want, some people come just for holidays some comes for like they want to rest like their own pension mm -hmm. some want to come and start their whole life here some want to come and give to the society mm -hmm. yes. you see so whatever the intention that you have to come no one is allowed to rob you mm -hmm. so what was your intention well, your intention is to our first intention, based on a philanthropic perspective, um, our background in ministry, our background to, in social welfare, was to come here and to first establish a clean water project in the Shy Hills area to facilitate about eight villages or so. We have since met with the elders and chiefs in that area, but because of the difficulties we've been having with fraud and the land guards, that project has been halted. It's been over... A, two years and we have still not received our paperwork for the land and additionally our grandma uh, which I deem to be the oldest Jamaican to return from slavery the diaspora and alive back to Africa it, Ghana, Ghana in particular she came with us at 94 years old to settle she has made several pleas on the air she has met with the uh, African American Diasporan Forum, the Minister of Tourism, and all these individuals, even the Jamaican Consulate, the Minister of the Jamaican Consulate, and to not, nothing has happened. She has not received citizenship as even the social media, the media in Jamaica were waiting for reports that their Nana has left Jamaica to obtain citizenship in Ghana. In Ghana. Yes. So where is Nana now? She has returned back. Woefully so, because the land which we purchased in Mamfi was fraud. We, our money, monies were stolen, and we went to the chief in the area. We went to the police station. We got no help. She was there. Her feet touched soil in Mamfi to build her house to settle in Ghana, and it was a fraud. And she has woefully returned home to Jamaica. This is a sad news. This is something that we don't want it to happen. I think uh, some of our African brothers that lives in the country need to be stop being greedy. We're saying that it's because if someone, the, one of the oldest, oldest person comes back home, as a slave, they took him as a slave and come back home and they treat him such way. I don't think it's fair. I think we need to, we need to, those people need to return whatever they have robbed you. Yes. They need to do that. Yes. We are here with our children. We have five children and we are suffering the consequences of this act this, this, this kind of fraud yes i've seen you are angry and you are upset and yes. you are also disappointed yes. i've seen the disappointed you do brother i don't even know what to say it is a sad news for me being also from diaspora that um been there for a long time and uh, trying to come back home and settle if I see people like this, which they are just like me, the difference is they were not born here. When they come here, they come back home. Why will our brothers and sisters home are not ready to receive them? It's one of the problems that we need to look into it. The government need to look into it. When they give the promise that a year of return, uh, whatever, what are they returning to? What what did you think you returned to when the government said, what do you think you returned to? I thought I would return, we would return to mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. 
where as diasporans we were told about the Pan American village. When we went to visit, there's no infrastructure, no lights, no water, no roads. So it's not a proper place for us to settle. You see, all of these things were didn't happen for us. They, the promises were they are uh, made and and calling us to come back home. There was no uh, no plan in place for those who are coming back home. So for everyone who has been coming in, they have to fend for themselves, okay? Which they told us to come, we're going to accommodate you, we're gonna give you land, we're gonna give you property, we're gonna compensate you for you being uh, stolen, you know, and we wanted to come back home. There was much that we learned from the Western world that we want to impact Ghana and we came to make a change we, come, we are social entrepreneurs and we want to affect change but the very same people who we are trying to yes. impact are the same people who are taking advantage yes. of us and they're calling us strangers, they're calling us uh, white man when we're not white and we, we are black, they call us bruni but we are not brunies in fact when we were coming we found some people who were leaving and we continue to like, ask them why they were leaving me because uh, here it is, we're home. And some of the same issues they were going through. We are now are planning to go back home because we are met with the same like, issues. We can't survive like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm economically, financially, socially. You're part of a culture that they say that they want you here, right? But then when you come here, you're not accepted. Yes. yes, basically. Correct. Yes, correct. Yeah. that's the correct word. And yeah. you're not ready to receive you. Yes. Right, and you're seen as an ATM. You're seen as a money making system because you impact the like, like economy. But then there's nothing in this uh, economy whereby you can uh, be self sufficient and you can take care of yourself and yes. take care of your family. your family. The avenues what they were supposed to put in place, there's none in place for us to strive. When we came here, we had staff and we had people who were like advising us. But eight employees, we had and twelve contractors. Right, yes. but eight employees. Yes. Eight employees, but all the advice wasn't for us to be benefited, but it's for the system and things, you know, would take place. For example, we got the Ghana card okay. and we paid a substantial amount for the card because we're foreigners. Right? We even paid for it for like our children who don't need to use yeah. those cards. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we paid for them. But now we cannot do like anything with them and now the card is soon to be expired. We can't even get a bank account with it. Most of the things we had to pay heavily for, we can't use it because when we approach some of these uh, in those, um, Banks institutions, and so on, institutions yeah. mm -hmm. they would let us know you're not Ghanaian. And it's one, another way of saying you're not African. And one of the key things they don't tell you, because you don't have a Ghanaian passport or birth, they look at you as a stranger and the fees is, sub is substantially higher. Yes. Everything that you say or do is much higher. Licensing, purchasing, uh, car insurance, everything that you do. You know, there's one price for the local, but for you yes. who's a foreigner, is the next question, and then when you go to, to purchase stuff, the first thing they say, they, or they ask you, mm -hmm. are you Ghanaian? And we're like, yes, and they're like, no, you're not, because even though we're the right color, right? But we don't speak the same language. Yes. Oh, good. As I said, this is a very sad news. Um, I don't even know what to say. What I'm saying, what I want to ask you again is, um, have you, Regretted being in Ghana. Yes, I have. You? Um, I regretted the experience what we have, but I love Ghana and I love the people, and that's why we came here. We came to make a, like a, an impact. Now there are certain things would need to be in place for those who are coming and for those who want to come home. We are sending the test out so that they will be aware of the challenges, aware so that when they come home. Um, they would be much more knowledgeable and much more equipped yes. to survive here. Um, one of the key things is when we go and we did our 
research they tell you come on this now but most of the people who are on YouTube their families are here they're or they born here. or they're born here so yes. when they try and listen here they already have something Easy. right yes. in place mm -hmm. or they're but, married to a Ghanaian yeah. yes mm -hmm. but for you who are a stranger coming you have to start from scratch mm -hmm. and the system is not friendly okay and for everything you have to pay for there's nothing free and there's such a long legalistic bureaucratic system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's in place that you cannot really impact the people who really need it the people who really are, are struggling the everyday folks and those are the people who we come to like impact the widow the orphans the, the poor these are the people who we come to like impact you know and you, verbally you give us your commitment to help us but then when we came here, practically, practically, I mean something else. Even all the government institutions who promise us that they are going to do these big things, when we talk to them, oh no, I and mean, even though we tell you it's like this, but then when you go there, it's something else, and they keep turning you round and round and round and round. You go from one door, they tell you go to this door, we go to that yes. door, go to the next, and next, and next, and it's like. No one wants to deal with the like issue that's passing forward. They're pushing it back and forth. And no one wants to directly deal with it. We met with several chiefs, several people of government who have the power to institute and to create change. We even went on several radio programs to try to see how we can institute help. But the help that is giving out is not real help. But it's help for only for those who are part participating and it's all need for them to go ahead and to be financially successful for everything that, that we do there is an exchange it's a tourist venture yes. what what you are telling me now is if i understand it's like when you go to the institutions to um, pros, process your papers or process whatever you like be, register your organization it's like they are not direct, it's like they are moving you from one door to another, one door to another, because you haven't give, uh, given envelope. Yes. yes. The dashing. Explain your intention to them, why you are there. Severally. We even generated letters from our NGO, which we eventually got in place. Uh, on our letter ed, we explain what the, our purposes of being here and our plight in getting citizenship so that if we're to help others, we ourselves first have to be settled of course. and well established. And that was ignored. They the often citizenship. Tell us the citizenship. What is the difficulties in, as a uh, African born in the other side and coming back home? To, to the government promised to give citizenship, mm -hmm. but when you go into deep, you explain what is the challenges in because the government has said it. Mm -hmm. When you go into in deep, what is the challenges in? We explain have, it for someone, yeah. someone over there when it's coming, know what to do. We have been told the law cannot be changed for us. Who do we think we are to just come here and expect the law to change? Which stipulates, I believe, seven years you have to be in Ghana before you can present an application. You have to have uh, local persons who have known you for over five years, have a certain amount of monies or assets in Ghana. Quite, quite naturally, someone who's relocating from another continent won't have resources or the connections needed to file. So this means you would have to be here suffering uh, with no job, no business, uh, because of those are the privileges of citizenship. For seven years, then what will happen to our family and, and our children? And so what they, are, what they are offering is resident permit, which is only good for one year if it's granted. And so you pay a lot of money for your resident permit and wait a long time sometimes. Uh, and along with that, even though you do get it, the residentship, you cannot be gainfully employed. employed. And if you are gainfully, if you try to create a business, business. 50 of that has to be Ghanaian owned. You yes. have to partnership with a Ghanaian. Okay. And oftentimes, yes, people that are you, those same yeah. people. And they know your position in terms of citizenship. So even the more they believe they're within right to exploit you. Have you had any experience about what you are saying? Have you had any experience about yes. maybe trying to register a company and um, they say you should partner with um, Ghanaian? 
Have you had some? That yes, 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 yes. Well. We and so we were refused because we didn't have the right qualifications for that. And in fact, when we try to go ahead and partnership with someone, they want to be at the forefront. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to explain them what our vision was and what like our plan was, but their plan and their dream was something else. Mm -hmm. They wanted to benefit from it, but they don't want to do the hard work and, and the, the, the labor of trying to mm -hmm. create a, a company from the, the ground up. They wanted to take oath from the beginning, you know, and that principle of you just, it's, it's like you're just yeah, having yeah, yeah. a they wanted, baby they wanted being born. Yeah, yeah. Yes. From, mm -hmm. Yes. And even though we agreed to give them that, 10, that percentage, they wanted that and they wanted more. more. And they wanted to bring in people who they know. So we didn't have the independent to make uh, choices what we wanted to. Yeah. Yes. I want to employ their own. Yes. yes. In fact, we were purchasing a property. We went through all the preliminary research. We and even went through a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And after we gave the funds, our representative did some deeper search. And we realized that the properties were fraudulent. Government okay? restricted, in fact, because of previous issues of fraud by the same family. And this was in Mamfi. So it was in Mamfi? Yeah, Mamfi. Mamfi. Yeah, Crappy. Yeah, yes. Abri. After April, yeah, Crappy yeah. Mamfi. Keep watching Kwamina TV, like, subscribe, and share. I'm still with Mr. and Mrs. Joseph. Um, their story is sad, but at the same time, it will educate someone. That is the reason why they are sharing this story. They came to Ghana with open hands. Like they want to come and give what they have learned from the West to Africa. Unfortunately, they've been duped, robbed, tricked. So they have making a decision of going back. We are saying this because we want people out there also to know if you can help at least to cover their money or travel expenses. If you can help for them to recover some of the money that they have fraud them. And if you are also one of the fraudsters, please stop. There's a lot of people coming back home, which they want to give what they have learned into the society. There is no continent that develop without diaspora That's in this world. Yes. Every country, every continent, America was developed because of we. Yes. England was developed, yes. or UK was developed because of diaspora. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whether there's Indian diaspora, mm -hmm. Chinese diaspora, every continent developed is in diaspora's hand, including Africa. Ghana can only develop because of diaspora. That's correct. One of the key things we have learned in like Africa, everything is done one, one, one. And you cannot create a first class nation like that. That's true. You have to be well versed and multi purpose. In order for you to change people, you have to change the culture. Yeah. But everything, Rachel, is done with no uh, sense of, of urgency. In order for you to get like anything done, you have to go through so much stages, one by one by one. And when it comes to nation building and the infrastructure, you cannot build like that. Mm -hmm. America is so great because of the system they have in place. Mm -hmm. And we come to try to introduce some of these systems, you know, but everyone is so resistant. Uh, you know, one of the things is Africa and Ghana is a sleeping giant. There's so much potential. Yes. But the people who need help don't get the help. Yes. And we come to try to impact that. But the, lead, the legalistic system is not 
allowing it. The system is set up for those who are right on top and those who, who can change it. They don't really care. The yeah. infrastructure, the, the road, the, the people under care. There is uh, nothing really in place. How to transfer? We come here to uh, pour into the people that seem knowledge, the same mm -hmm. uh, expertise that, that we good. have. Okay, but you're seen as someone who can come to take and not yes. give. And we're trying to open doors, we're trying to empower people, we're trying to encourage and teach people. But you're, we are being seen as a brony, someone who, you know, yeah. and America is great because of the technology that came from like Africa. We have the mm -hmm. technology here, but we haven't built like upon it. It's like every man for himself. And it takes a village to raise like anyone, so it takes all of us to come to together. Get together. We like to stick right. like a group. Yes. Yes. So you know that if you know what you know and I know what I know and we come together, together. there's no one that can stop us. That's Strong it. force. Especially there's mm -hmm. some herbs that you guys don't eat here that we eat here. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and there's some knowledge what you know. Do you know if we come together how powerful we can, we be, can be as a people? Because we all one color, we all one people. It yes. doesn't really matter our background, but it's our thoughts and our intent how to make Ghana better, how to make Africa greater, better and greater. What do you have to say, sister? I what want I to give you? thanks to God for having afforded the opportunity to my Nana and myself to come and experience Africa, something that was stripped away from our generation and that we believe eventually will be fully restored in the sense of, I want to see Ghana become a greater nation, a better nation, and I would like to see the mindsets of people changed. The way you summarize this, may I ask you, you don't want to come back to Ghana again? The because of is to come back to Ghana and to ultimately settle here. But like this, it's not functional. And I'm making a plea for those who are in power, even the local citizens, if each one of us do our part to make this place better, it won't only be I or my family. Millions, thousands of us will return home. Brother. Yes. Uh, one of the key things I want everyone to know who wants to come back home Please do your research and let your research be very specific, okay? Because there are some details yeah. and some miscommunication in culture and language that are misinterpreted or that's not being communicated clearly, okay? Because we're from other background. I do not understand like how you like understand. There are certain things in uh, language that when it's communicated, it's not the same. So, when coming to Ghana, you have to understand the culture, you have to understand the language, you have to understand the people. So, uh, we did our research to do all of these things to understand that, so that we, when we come in, we will be successful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, number one is research. Okay, research deep and, research. and deep, preparation, deep yes. Research. And that is why I come in and I say, if anyone want to come back home, you can connect to, with Kwamina TV. We will link you up to the right people. Yes. Or if we have to make the research for you, we will do it for you. I've also lived in diaspora for so many years and, and I had a lot of challenges like the way my brother and sister are having. But... I'm in, so I have passed through this challenge. Yes. So if anyone comes and say, oh, I need to have this, I know exactly where to go. Yes. We have organizations in place that they can help you better than you yourself coming directly and also maybe a friend or um, a person that you know, your work colleague over there tells you, go to my family, they will help you. Come. 126 plus is there, Brother Yo, for example. Kwaminat. I'm there. We have other organizations. We have other people that um, they will stand. It's, it's very unfortunate that I didn't meet brother and sister early. I had the same issue 2020 when I left 
when I was over there, someone came and want to take my land. It's, it's a long story. We're not going to go into that. But I'm just saying that if you are coming, please make a research. We don't want you to become a victim. Yes. I think the same thing that brother is saying. Don't become a victim. Use our um, suffering to benefit, to benefit you. I will still ask you one question. Overall, I know you have been duped and all those things. Overall, how do you find Ghana? Or how do you find Africa? Africa, like our sign says, is for Africans. We are Africans. This is our home. This is where we belong. Yeah. And if you don't embrace us as African people, your brother, your sister, in America, they don't look at us as being a part of the culture. We are just consumers. We are someone, and then when you come home, it's the same thing, okay? But that doesn't deter, it, it does not change us, okay? We are home. This is where we belong, okay? And we want to continue to develop it. Just that we have to uh, just strategize and just change things up yes. and, and come back. But for right but now, uh, we are economically challenged and we have to just revamp some things. But we are more equipped with knowledge and with understanding now how the system works. Yes, we're going to come back. We, this is our home. This is where we belong. Growing up in the Caribbean, we, are, we were taught that Africa is home. Okay, this is yes. where, our, where we come from. The Europeans have where they come from, but when we did our research, we come home. This is where we belong. Okay. And mostly the Caribbean, the 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 Jamaicans and the yes. uh, uh, you are from Bahamas. Bah Bahamas, yeah. Most of them are from Ghana. Yes. yes. Most of them, yes, are from yes. Ghana. My sister, how? How are your children feeling now that when they hear that they have to go back? How are your children feeling now? They are saddened because they have made the adjustment, break through those initial cultural barriers. Uh, they are saddened. Uh, but one of the reasons they are saddened is because of their experience with the local people. They didn't feel as if they were well embraced. And I know that Ghanaians can do better. This situation just needs to be exposed so that we can pull people into the realization of where we can be, you see. And so they're, they're not necessarily wanting to leave, but again, the economical challenge has forced us to go. The economic challenge, the economic challenge has forced them to go back. It's just because some of us didn't do, th didn't do the things right. As brothers say that they see them as ATM. They are not ATM. When we come back home, we come back to Africa, we come back home to be home. Brother said, Africa is for Africans. They are the brothers and sisters who can develop Africa. We sit down here and call, tell people that Africa is calling them. But there are some Africans also who are not ready to receive them. Yes. <clears throat> what advice, again, will you give it to the diasporans, both Ghanaian born African descendants or diasporas or both um, our brothers and sisters like you over there. What advice will you give it to them? The people should still keep on coming with your experience because we have, it's very unfortunate that you've been in this situation. What other advice will you give it to those people? It is very important. I would advise them to come, take a look, do your research. Do your like observations and, and do your planning. But have a contingency plan, have a well thought of plan, mm -hmm. 
and connect with people like yourself mm -hmm. who are going to look out for them, who are going to take them through the process and to safeguard them from all the corruption, yes, mm -hmm. all the uh, 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 troubles, and that they would be able to survive and would be guided through the whole process that they may be successful in coming home. That they have a foundation that they can build upon, you know. Yes. Ghana is a wonderful place. It's very peaceful. It's loving. And this is where, uh, if you are an African, where you want to be, home. Hmm. And there's no place like home. And I would like to add, I would um, advise that those who are planning to come to Africa, uh, that they wait. And what I mean by that is that they wait until the government and the community leaders have educated the locals and put the right policies and system in place to receive them. And do you think they even know what they are doing? That's a question. No, I'm asking this because I'm in. Yes. And I know what I see. I, I'm not sure if it is that they don't know. I think if you don't take time and say you are going to wait, it's going to wait forever. Let's be in. I'm telling you, sister. Sister said it's true, brother. That's the reality. Yes. I've tried coming reality. to Ghana. It's a sad reality. I've tried coming to Ghana so many times mm -hmm. to come and settle. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. I come and I go. I come. I was born here. Yes. I come and go, I come and go, and this time I determine mm -hmm. to stay. Mm -hmm. I will still go, but because my kids are there, uh -huh. but I will come back, but I determine to stay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you shared that. Oh, yes. Um, I, I've come several times. I got, I opened a pure water company, mm -hmm. and I tell you that it's another story. Mm -hmm. yes. If I'm going to go into it, Someone will take your truck, load the water. I think you have seen it when they load the water going mm -hmm. to distribute. Mm -hmm. They will distribute half. Just a short story that I'm telling. They will mm -hmm. distribute half. Mm -hmm. Offload the rest and pack it somewhere. Use your truck. Load someone's goods like mm -hmm. a plantain, cassava. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take it to the market. This offload it and come and pack your water and bring it back to you that the water is not sold. Wow. You see? People that they say there's no work. Mm -hmm. People that you trust and give them. Yes, correct. Correct. So I am saying that if we don't insist to come and change, brighten the corner where we are, one, two, slowly, mm -hmm. We're still going to remain there, okay. and we don't want to remain there. Yes, you are correct. Mm -hmm. That is why I'm just trying to share this thing with you for you to think again. Because apart from the way they treated in and over there, killing and all those things. Apart from that, when you wake up in the morning here, you look around, you see everyone just like you. That alone. Yes, and that should matter to so those who are in charge at yes. least, to know your brother and sisters yes. are where they belong. That's it. Yes. So, I know it has happened. I don't think it's going to happen again mm -hmm. to you. Oh, yes. But at the same time, we are sharing this to the other people. If you just came in, please, there is a... Diaspora talk, experiences, difficulties, whether it's bitter or it's enjoying, come, give a call, go to Instagram, send email, Kwamina TV, I want to talk to you. I want to share my experiences. I want to tell you what has happened to me. I want to tell you how good Ghana was. I want to tell you how good Africa was. I want to invest in Africa. Let us direct you in the right place. I want to tell my story to educate someone, to encourage someone, to discourage someone. Call. We will we'll be where you are. Anywhere you are, we will be there. We can connect also 
on Zoom and talk to you like brothers and sisters, brother and sister here sharing their story. As I said, it's a star story. I'm very sad. My heart is bleeding that they are going back, honestly. But I'm going to pray for them and I wish they will come back one day where we have also settled down properly and we guide them in the right way. Those people who are duping them don't think that they are going scot-free. They will be looked for and hunt one day. How many plots did you purchase in, 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 in Manfi? Two plots. It was with the intention to build our home for our family. Because where we are, we are renting now. But the initial plan, what we wanted to do, okay, we were trying to get several like acres to do some farming. Farming, yeah. But uh, that did not uh, cement, because even when we went looking for properties, the properties they were like offering us was very, um, the quality of the, the, the land. Mm -hmm. You see, because we're foreigners, they still try, didn't try to give us the, the, the best. The best. Mm -hmm. They give us substantial uh, places to take them, and plus the cost of it was so much more. Yes. Which we were, area was that? And uh, it was off the outskirts of uh, the Abri Mountains, passing Mamfi and going down into some far villages. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Yeah. okay. It's all the same area. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. The same area. Um, brother, yes. end your story first. Okay, uh, we just want to say that in this journey, we, we, we met some wonderful people. We met some people who were very helpful and some people who support us, who help us through, who guide us. But with life, there is balance. You made good and you made bad. So um, this whole experience did not come to deter us, but it came to make us stronger. Yes. That's it. So and that's the thing that we're trying to uh, let everyone know there is hope. The Word of God says all things work together for them that are called and chosen. So this is just a uh, dip in the bucket for someone who wants to come in so they will get and learn from our experiences that they would make better decisions even us and our fail. we are much more knowledgeable and knowledge is power that's, that's, true. that's true my sister your last I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be heard and to share and um, may you be fruitful in your endeavors and your mission to, to help us all. Is there anything at all you want to say? One thing I want to say, I want to say, I, I heard you say Mama is going for her, her birthday or something like this. Yes, and yes. I want to wish her happy birthday in advance, whether it's already gone or it's now coming. It's gone. It's gone? A it's, weeks. Yes. Oh, so, Happy belated, happy belated birthday, Mama. Um, it's very unfortunate that I couldn't see you personally. I think, I think one of the distant um, meetings that at that very, I think yes, she was, you she was there. Yes, yes. yes. she was there. But for one reason or the other, I even gave you my destiny, isn't it? We have your contact, but we just because of the timing. Uh -huh. Yes, because um, I heard something like bad, bad, bad it, but then. Mama, happy belated birthday, and I wish and I hope I will see you again in Ghana, um, which I don't know because of your age, but I pray that you're going to grow about 125, 130 yes. years old. My mom is 83, um, 87, my mom, and she's still there. And my grandma was 135 years wow. before she passed on. Wow. So. It's, it's there. Yeah. It's, it's in the gym. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I wish you happy belated birthday again. And I hope to see you one day in Ghana again before God calls we all. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story, sister. Thank you very much for sharing your story. And thank you, brother Joseph. Um, um, what I want to say again is... Um, 
If you are not a member of Kwame Na TV, subscribe to Kwame Na TV and share your story. Come share your story most of the time. If you have any business that you want us to advertise for you, also we come to your premises and advertise for you. This is what we do. It's Kwame Na TV promoting African businesses, home and abroad. Talk to intellectuals, diasporas, just like having this talk. And I, I, I never done interview. I had conversation. I want the people to pour their heart, whatever they have seen, talk from their heart. Not questions that will just stop them not to say things. Anything at all they want to say, provided what they are saying, it's what is happening. Mm -hmm. Like what happens and what sister and brother has experienced, I have experienced it, so I know that it is happening. It yes. still continue happening. I think the government, when this government came, he fought against land guards, but I, they are still yes, doing it without, I think, the government knowledge. Yes. When you are in your property, they will just drop there, and nowadays yes. they have motors. They will just drop there, you see them joined, yes. and they come, they don't tell you that or give us money because we take care of that. Land guards mean like they take care of your land when you are not there. <laughs> that is the normal meaning of land guards. Okay. Like the, uh, the, the king or the chief or whatever have some boys that come on. We sold this land so take care of it. Mm. So that next person don't come. But they turn around selling it on, the, on their yes, own. Yes. And also when they even sold to you they themselves will come again. Yes. And come it in has demand. Happened. Yeah. Yes. It does happen. Yes. I know. The government put an end to it, but still people are doing it. And that's why we don't want it to happen again. That is why we are sharing this on the platform mm -hmm. that normally, when it happens like this, you could call police. They have special people. There are some people, like the way brother and sister said, when their case happened, they went to the authority. The authority turned around. They didn't receive them. No. The police didn't help. The lawyer fought them. Yes. So all the people around them fought them, which it shouldn't be. But they are legitimate lawyers also here. That's why I said, when you come back next time, or when anyone is coming, tell them to come. Connect to Kwame Na TV. I will link them. If you ask Brother Yeo, we will tell you, Brother Yeo, someone called from Atlanta, he want to come, he want to get proper information before they come. Yeah. Straight away, I call Brother Yeo. Yeah. Brother Yeo, there's someone called me. Uh, I've given your number even before I told you. Mm -hmm. And they link up, so that person will not have any difficulties when yes. he's coming. Keep watching Kwame Na TV, like, subscribe, and share. I'm still the youngest old boy. I love you guys. <laughs> I am the youngest old boy. <laughs> Come on, we love you all. Brother, thank you very thank much. Thank you too.